meeting is being recorded. All right, so we're back with episode 30 of the Idiot Circle. I'm Mike. I'm Fred. I'm Rob. Fred, why don't I'm you Rob. introduce our very special guest? I'm Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, we have Mr. Darren Letson, head football coach of Marine City. Uh, I had the pleasure of coaching him in high school. Um, we're sorry, and Darren. Dad, and my dad yeah. still talks talks a little bit about him too. So, you know, he's a, you know, he's a, played some baseball at Central Michigan. He played at uh, played at Macomb Community College, uh, and uh, we're here to talk about uh, the upcoming football season for the Black. Go wait Black, go Marine City. Wait, 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 wait. Let's cut for a second. Let's do this all over again. We got the head coach <laughs> of the Marine City Mariners. We got to start this out better. So we introduce them, Fred. We got to do the big, yeah, everybody, well, let's, you know, pump it up. All right, go, shut it Fred. off and we'll start over. Okay. No, 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 don't shut it off. We'll just, we'll just give them the okay. proper introduction. Okay, take two, deserve. take two. Sorry, Darren. Yeah, yeah like that. Because Rob missed yesterday and, and he's a little ADD. Let's start this. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest today. We have Mr. Do Darren Letson, the head football you? coach from your Marine City Mariners. Yeah! There you go. Yeah! <laughs> nice job, Freddie. <laughs> no. That's Are you better. happy, Rob, you prick? <laughs> you know I'm keeping everything that you said in the beginning, coach. right? We're, we will only address you as coach on the show because that's You're the right. respect you deserve. <laughs> this is a hallowed moment for the idiot circle. We, we've had the past coach on the show. We've had guys that have been involved with the program. But, you know, this is like having Nick Saban come to our little, you know, blog here or whatever this is. This is a huge deal. It is. So, well, I, I, I appreciate it, but I – I remember a couple things, you know, just getting into this. Number one, I remember, I don't know, it's December of probably 2019 there because my first year would have been 20, so it would have been December 2019. Talked to uh, uh, our administration there, Sherry Becker and uh, uh, Dave Maru, who was our AD at the time. He's now going to be the the, the principal here at, at St. Clair High School, and uh, we're fortunate now to have Chris Reinhardt uh, from Richmond, uh, take Dave's, Dave's position, position, uh, as ADAP. And he's going to do a great job. Talked to Chris several times, going to do a wonderful job. He's a great asset, uh, to our school, very sports oriented. Um, and, and, and it's, it's, it's going to help us, uh, hopefully try and even grow even, even more, but back to what I was, my, my initial thought is I just remember, you know, talking to him about it. Um, and I remember telling them that, you know, a couple of things, number one, I just remember, and you can ask the kids, I say it all the time. Uh, the standard is the standard, and, and I won't waver from the standard. Uh, and I've, I've held true to that uh, since, since day one. And, and Bob, uh, Tony, Ron, they really all helped create uh, and, and develop the standard of, of what uh, we try to live by as, as Marine City football. Uh, and I just, you know, following in their footsteps. With that being said, I also said on day one, you know, talking to them that let's be honest, if this thing ever gets screwed up, <laughs> there's, there's no, there, there's no finger pointing. There's no, I mean, I had 20 years to work with three guys who are now in the Michigan high school football coaches uh, hall of fame. I mean, what other guy in my position in the state of Michigan, and I could be wrong. I really could be, I don't know, but I can't believe there's another coach that had 20 years to learn under three, you know, three hall of famers. Um, and I was saying earlier, Freddie, before you came on, you know, I just remember 98, 99, I was a volunteer. So I'm just sort of finishing up my school and getting back two days a week to practice and, and helping out doing whatever on the games. You know, I don't know. I think some days I was just writing out plays or whatever play, whatever, whatever. Um, but I remember I just sort of fell in love with it. And then I get hired in the, spring of 2000 so my first year in the classroom or in education there would have been the fall of 2000 um and really from that point on each year i sort of had this just this little notepad so i had a notepad for the year 2000 the year for 2001 and really i kept something each year you know so i had what five years with bob because bob's last year was 2004 i think i had what seven years then or whatever with tony because tony was 05 through 11 
And then Ron was what, 12 through 19. So I had all these mm -hmm. notebooks, you know, to, to just study from, you know, and really, really take things in. And I'm quite sure those guys have been great to me, man. I'm quite sure at times I drove them nuts because, uh, no, not you. I just followed them around. I mean, I was, <laughs> I was like their little puppy. I mean, I really was, you know what I mean? Like if they went to breakfast, I just went to breakfast with them. I just did everything I could, uh, with those guys. I just in train, I just put myself right or myself right into their, their life. I mean, I, re I mean, I'm, I'm raising Cooper and my daughter, Julia. I mean, Tony raised Anthony and Avery, Ron raised Gunner. I mean, I saw them. I remember Gabby and Gunner. I mean, Gabby, they're both married and Gabby just had a baby. I remember when they were two years, you know, three years old or whatever. You, you know what I mean? So I just, so much of what we do, you know, we, we live through them yet. I mean, the program really does live through them. Uh, and if you go back even farther, I mean, let's be honest, guys. I know Jerry Warkentine lives in California now, but I mean, just think of the vision he had to have. I mean, obviously he, he got the semis in 85. Uh, Carlson, Coach Carlson there had what, I believe a two year stint, 86, 87. Was it one year? One and year. And Bob, Bob started in 88. Yep. And so the, the, and it, the, vision, just... the vision to hire all these guys um, and for this thing really to go on what one losing season and what would be almost 40 years now. Uh, is wow. rather it's it's just unique you know it's so unique um i love it um I, I really do i just uh uh you know people ask me what my shelf life is because they know my son's in 10th grade my <laughs> my daughter's in ninth now i I'll, I'll i i i believe i'll be around yet god i mean as long as the administration wants me to be through past my past my kids graduation i just really enjoying it i even enjoyed 2020 with covid for whatever reason uh, maybe it's because my first year, I don't know, as hard as it was, uh, I just enjoy, I enjoy, I guess you'd say that, I, I know it's high school football, but I guess I, I enjoy the pressure of being the head coach. I enjoy that, whatever that is, I enjoy that. Well, Darren, so the reason, town, the reason why town. you enjoy that, Darren, that 2020 season, that COVID season is because it, it gave, it gave you and the staff and the kids, some normalcy, even if it was just for a short period of time where it broke up a little bit. But the thing is, is you've always, and as, you know, like I said, as coaching you as a sophomore, all the way, all the way through your senior year, you were always that person that was always looking for the pressure situations and what a, what a bigger pressure situation than come taking over for Ron <laughs> and, and, and being, you know, being a predecessor. Cause you know, quite frankly, there's a lot of coaches in this area that have taken over for legends and completely, uh, sh you know, shit the bed, so to speak. Hey, coach, they, don't you love how he doesn't ask you a question? He just tells you your answer. Tell me, answer. I was agreeing with him, you ass. You know, what's hey, interesting, a, a lot of people may not know now, but what's also interesting when I talked about just, you know, living through those guys, which really I did. I mean, I, I don't pick any bones about it. I, I really don't. Um, you know, Bob and Fred may know this just because, but Bob lived on Urban Drive. Yep. I don't know if Ron lived maybe a half mile down from Bob on Urban Drive. Yep. yep. Uh, and then Tony just lived in a cul-de-sac really between them right off of Urban Drive. And then when my wife and I got married, we lived right next to the houses north of, of, of Ron yet on Urban Drive. Yeah. And I just, it, it's just, uh, like I said, I go back to, I just followed those guys around. I mean, I remember nights when the season was over and, and Bob was still the head coach or, and, and him and I would go for these. We'd leave at four thirty, five o'clock in the evening and there'd be Fridays or Saturdays. I don't even know what, I don't know what time we get home, but we would just go for these walks and sure we'd maybe end up at Gars or Anita's or whatever, but the amount of football we talked and just talking about, you know, just, just like good conversations, you know, about life and football and, 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 and Marine city and, and, and just all of that stuff. I just, you know, really, I think part of the, I, I do know part of the reason we've had success in my very short period of time to here is to, the, the two year period. It's just, I just felt very prepared or I feel very prepared. And, and really it's just a credit to those guys allowing me again to just be, you know, live, live through them. Coach. Thanks for being so reflective. I mean, that is a great insight. And we've talked to other coaches. We had Coach Ron on. We had 
uh, Bill Nez been on. We talked about the culture of Marine City football in that lineage. And Fred and Mike and I always talk about college football. The tree of family of coaching kind of reminds us of Ohio State, right? When they lose a coach, they don't go out and look for a coach. They have the they have the next three already in line, kind of like you. But here is my question for you. You're in a tough position, coach. Um, you're the head coach of Marine City football in the town of Marine City. It's very popular. It's important to these people, football, right? It's ingrained oh, it's into them. <laughs> Just think about all the coaches that are really good at going in high school, like Coach Bob did, come in to build a program. Or even in college or pro, those coaches are good at it. They stay there for three to five years, then they go on and do something else. It's almost tougher to keep the torch going year after year after that thing's been built. Talk a little bit about what that pressure is and how you you, you deal with that or cope with that every day. Yeah, you know, so uh, who asked me, uh, Brennan Welper from the Times Herald, I don't know if he put it in there. I, I talked to somebody la- earlier, I, I, just this past week, within the last week, and I said, I just remember I played in the early 90s there for Coach Bob, 90, what, 91, 92, 93, right in that time period there. And in, in, in now being, you know, the age that I am, when you go back and look at those years, and, and they would all agree, you know, we were hunting. You know, our, our program was hunting. We were, we were, we were in those, you know, those built, those stages where it was just, it was just continually uh, climbing that mountain. In some years, it felt like maybe you stayed at the same, you know, the same, the, the your, your campsite never got higher. You, you just stayed there, you know, uh, and then other years, you know, uh, 90, what, 94, I think Coach Bob made the semis and lost, uh, who did they lose? I believe it was Monroe Jefferson. Yes. Uh, you know, so they took that next, you know, and then 95, 96, it was like, dang it, they're just stuck at that that spot. And, and, you know, I remember in the early 2000s there, heck what, there was three years, 99, 2000, 2001, where again, I was volunteer 99, 2000, 2001 was just starting. We lost to Orchard Lake St. Mary's, I think three years in a row in the regional final. And everyone's like, I just don't know. <laughs> you're just stuck there, you know, and God forbid you're playing those three te- those, you know, Orchard Lake three years in a row there. And I really believe had we not played them three years in a row, Bob would have won one. You know, at he least. Had, we were good enough in those three years to at least win one of those had we not played uh, Orchard Lake. And then 03 and 04, or 02 and 04, we lose in regional finals again. Uh, Scar comes in. 06, we think we have a team. Uh, we get blown out by Highland Park in a regional final. It was just a physical nightmare. Uh, and then, uh, you know, for whatever reason, in 07, 07, something switched. And it, it, I go back to that Flint Powers game. I don't know if people were, if any of you were at it. It was 28 oh, yeah. nothing. And and I'm I'm in the press box during that that stage of my career and Ron, working with Ron. Ron's on the field. Um, we're down 28 nothing. And uh, uh, I remember right right before half, not like the last second, but within the last minute, minute and a half, uh, Brendan hits Chad Elliman uh, for, a, for a big touchdown pass to make it 28-7 going into half. And I just remember at halftime, it just felt, even though we were really getting the doors blown off us in the first half, it just felt different. It felt different because I remember Coach Scar walking in and saying, we're making no adjustments. Here's the adjustments we're making. We're tackling better and we're blocking better. Those are the adjustments. That's it. And then we had that kid that took the ownership. I remember Brendan standing up in front of the whole team. And it, it gets emotional because you're just, you know, but he's, he stands up in front of the whole team and he says, I will handle everything. Just put the ball in my hands, however it's going to be done. And we will win this game. And I remember we got the ball to start the second half. Uh, I don't think we scored a touchdown, but Chad Elliman had a big kickoff return. I think he gets caught. Uh, and then Brendan kicks a field goal. It's 28, uh, 10. We, we get a stop. And from there on out, man, it was like the light switch came on and we rolled them in the second half. And I think we ended up winning 42-28 or something like that. And that just seemed to flip us from hunting to now we're the hunt, now we're the hunted. And after winning it in 07, beating Country Day. And and I remember talking about that. And I and it's still, I think it's still true today. We're the hunted. I enjoy that. For whatever reason, I think our, our, our kids enjoy being the hunted. They, they know the work they have to put in. Um, 
they, 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 they know they're going to get things, uh, but they know they're only going to get those things if the work's put in and so on and so forth, you know? Uh, so we, I, to me, we love the risk versus reward. We, we just, for whatever Coach, reason, have, you ever, been, have you ever been around another athlete like Kay? And not, I'm not talking about just the physical ability that he brought to the field, but just that moment you told us in that locker room got you a little teared up, a little emotional. That was a it, it does, moment. it does. No, it does. I, you know, Br Brendan was special in that. You know, he had the athletic ability. Uh, obviously, he had the six four frame, right? And he had the four something speed and the two thirty. You know, he had that build, uh, but he had that physical frame, but he had that drive with it. And then on top of that, he was just a great human being, you know, just a great kid, uh, did real well in school, got along with that. You know, everyone didn't matter what their position was in the school per se or, or whatever. He got along with everyone. We've had kids. I thought Jarrett Matheson had an incredible drive. I thought Charles Tiger had an incredible drive. Great athlete, I right? thought Josh Headley was a very uh, fierce competitor. Uh, and we've had some kids down low that, um, you know, Zach Malarney back in coach Bob was a yep. fierce competitor. He, I mean, he would, he'd rip your eyeballs out. You know, we've Boy. had kids <laughs> that, that had drive and, and that competitive spirit like no other. We just haven't had kids that have had the build per se, like Brendan for that to be exposed more possibly at the next level. Yeah. Right. I think, I think Marine city in itself is, as much of a powerhouse that it has been for, you know, like nearly 40 years, I think they've been overlooked multiple times as far as the players are concerned, you know, being able to play at a high division two or even a, a smaller division one level. I have, I have no, I have no idea why Charles Tiger, Charles Tiger, excuse me, Charles Tiger is a division two football player. I don't care what anybody says. I agree, couldn't agree with you more. And I am, I am, I am amazed and I'll call him out and say it. He doesn't stop in, so it doesn't really matter. I am amazed that Wayne State's head coach lives in Marysville and has never stepped foot in our school. With all the games we've won, Wayne State's head football coach has never stepped foot in our school, and he drives by it every day to Wayne State. Hey, look at his oh, record, and that'll tell you why. Well, Coach, how are, you know, so some of the bigger programs, high school programs, they do a lot of feature, right? Feature their athlete to certain schools. When I left Marine City, I went to California. I went to an area, Riverside, California, had Norco High School, small little school like, mm -hmm. like Marine City, but a pipeline for Arizona and Nebraska. But they worked mm -hmm. on that. They had someone on their staff that constantly showcased athletes to them, not just for that athlete knowing that when you position athletes out of your program, division two and division one, it helps the program because now you can start to recruit. Like I, I saw in one of your articles earlier, you, you made the comment after the game, like I love coaching kids that play in my zip code, right? Zip code. Sure. Yeah. That was my parting yeah. shot last right. year. Right. Parting <laughs> shot. Great yeah. shot. I However, no problem and you know this, it, 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 we're fans we understand we talk about it those schools get to recruit right the public schools don't but when it is on the line when it's all said and done we can't have the excuse you got to beat grand rapids catholic central right that's that's oh we do it, it, no let, let's be honest i mean I, i'll pick no bones about it i mean i've told our kids about it we've we've talked about it as a team and i i don't i don't shy away from telling people i think we got a really good team I'm not that guy that's going to – my kids know I am I am upfront and honest with them. If I don't think we're very good, I'm going to tell them I don't think we're very good. Uh, but I think we have a team, again, to really um, re really compete. I just think we have the right pieces. Will that translate? We're going to find out August 26th. Um, but uh, we did some things. You know, I, I go back to – so I go back to my first year getting off the bus against Frank and Move. Uh, and I've told this story before. I remember Jan it was January 9th. We get off the bus, 536. It's dark out because it's January. Say goodbye to our, our seniors like we always do the right way. Hug them, you know, all that stuff. Uh, and I politely asked them to leave the gym. I said, you can go wait for your friends. Uh, just give me 10 minutes with, with the returners. Just give me 10 minutes, and then you guys can do whatever you need to do. So I think they went in the main gym, whatever. And I looked every one of those kids that was going to be on last year's team in the eye. I said, let's pick no bones about it. The only way you don't get to Ford Field next year is if you don't invest in that weight room. 
end of discussion. There is enough talent in this gym right now to get to Ford Field. And I remember walking into school in January. I don't know. It might not have. Been, it wasn't 11th because we still didn't start because of COVID. So it's like the Tuesday after Memorial Day or whatever that is when we formally came back to school. And man, that weight room was rocking and it has not quit rocking since, I mean, through the summer. It, it is crazy how our kids uh, have invested in that weight room and continue to do so. Um, I, I think we have a really good football team. I, I, I know we've done some things uh, with our hips, our bend uh, this past winter and summer uh, to help us, what we think will help us against Grand Rapids Catholic Central. There's a couple other pieces um there that we're going to try and implement because let's pick no bones about it man they're getting back this, this year there's when you look at the west side with west catholic going down to division six and unity christian staying in four to me there's no surprise who's going to be there from the west in five and to me on the east not being arrogant not being that guy i think you have marine city frankenmuth portland depending if they go east or west right because they can get they've gone both sure in country day now in division five. I think those three teams are your teams to beat in, in, in division five on, on the East side. I firmly believe one of those three is going who does who invest between now and that those games is who's going. So I would love the confidence coach. That's awesome. We do. Well, he should, he should be confident since uh, they're the, they're in the top five in, in, in the division and wins over the last 10 to 20 years and what people don't realize that in division most of those wins were in division four but the fact of the matter is is he takes a comment like he did about the about saying within the zip code just kind of piled on right with ron said on channel seven when he said you know there's no recruiting here we we play with kids that are come from our hometown you know yeah. and and the thing is is you know you get somebody like you get somebody like uh darren gets the kids pumped up um, I saw Jeffrey Hessel, the quarterback, the other day, and he looks like he looks like a linebacker. <laughs> he looks like they've I mean, done, he is, they've done. They've done. It, it's. I mean, it is unbelievable. Jeff, Jeff, in all honesty, will test out as the best quarterback we've ever had. And we've never had a quarterback bench three fifty, squat four fifty, or right in there, and deadlift five five hundred plus. I mean, and, well, and Zach, let's talk. Uh, about, you know, going back to the college recruiting, though, I meant to add, like Zach Tetler, yeah. for example, right. So this mm -hmm. summer, he spends all summer doing the camp circuit. It scored 30 touchdowns last year, helped get us to Ford Field. He ran a 4-4 twice on the camp circuit this summer. How can a kid like that run a 4-4 twice on the camp circuit? And Hillsdale is the only Division II school to offer him. I mean, like, well, I don't get what Saginaw Crazy. Valley – I don't understand what some of these guys – I, I just don't I just don't get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just I you're don't, I don't out game, understand you're it. out game filled film to a lot of these universities though. They get it all. Yeah, they have these kids all know. make their huddle highlight film and the co the college coaches are on. They get yeah. the huddle highlight film. Yeah, yeah, they get all that. They have all of that. Let's well, talk about Heslip for a little bit because he, he's a kid that really impressed me. He's going in, this will be his third year as the starter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of pressure on a young man like that. A lot of pressure to keep your nose clean for three years, do all the right things, get good grades, and then mm -hmm. be a vital part of that team. He reminds me, and, and I'm not a, f a football expert by no means. I watch college football and a little bit of pro. He always he reminds me of one of those guys that could be an Iowa quarterback, right? Didn't get recruited yeah. very high, but he comes into Iowa. He, he develops, he blossoms a little bit more, and then he beats Michigan in the big house like two – two times out of four years. He's, he's done a great, you know, what he did last year, I thought he really improved his ability in the run game. Uh, he became a real asset for us in the run game. I mean, it, it showed dev obviously huge dividends in the Notre Dame prep game. He, you know, he had two touchdown runs there, including the game winner. Uh, and he's got more speed than people think. He's a four, six kid. I mean, he's not going to get caught uh, in, in, in high school there, but you know, he's a gamer. He's a physical kid. He's done everything you've asked in the weight room. Uh, he fully yeah, understands he, our offense inside and out now. He's got some kids with Rufino and Atkinson. Um, Colin Gabler is going to be a young kid. We can split Tetler out. This Paul Muscat, who's a sophomore, uh, he's got kids he can get the ball out to that can that are going to really be able to do something with it. Um, and, I, and don't just, forget just, a, just yeah, Brock Osterlin, too. 
Well, watch the other side of the ball and see where Jeff fits in on the other side of the ball. I think people are going to be very excited at what Jeff does on the other side of the ball. Oh, yeah. I also think people are going to be very excited. Um, shoot, I don't remember what number he is now, but there's a freshman that's going to take a lot of snaps at, at quarterback, and I think people are going to be blown away at where this freshman's at. So. Nice. Oh, my God, I think we're getting first on that. I haven't heard that in any other <laughs> interview he's given. It's going to be a unique. Uh, it's going to be a unique situation. You're going to see Jeff lined up as a halfback. You're going to see Jeff lined up as a fullback, and you're going to see Jeff lined up as an ISO. Hey, hey don't give Jeff away all the trade secrets. Our Armida, don't give away. Let them. Hey, let them. Let them have them. They still got. I don't. I don't care. You got to figure it out. But um, I mean, let's 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 be honest. Jeff and Zach are two horses, right? I mean, Jeff and Zach are two horses. They're gonna. Let's be honest. Armida, look at the schedule. Armida, St. Clair, Marysville. Uh, Lamphere, who's in the silver now and won the bronze last year, yep. made the playoffs. You yeah, let's be honest, those, those, those games, you ride your horses, right? And your horse is taken. You hope the role players make a couple plays here and there and, and spark you a little bit. And uh, I mean, go back to the semifinal game last year. Portland, was it our uh, Ty Nelson makes, I believe, a, a huge interception. And then um, Jeff throws a little stop route out to Parker Ackett's and a little sophomore makes a move, gets on the sideline, and the kid has tremendous athletic instincts. I mean, how many kids, you know, dive to the pylon and actually have the ball in the correct hand on the inside so that he's in bounds to, you know, to to score that first touchdown there. But uh, no, we're excited. We have some kids. And the, the freshman is uh, Brock's brother, Lincoln, uh, Osterlin there. That, that He's, he's going to be a good one. But uh, he's going to do some things at quarterback as a freshman because he's going to allow Jeff to do some other things with that. So, yeah. I'll tell you right now, the other thing, too, is uh, um, my cousins went to Grand Rapids Catholic Central. And they, uh, uh, about a week after the game, um, they called me and they said that, you know, they spoke to the coaching staff and they said, um, regardless of what the score says, that was probably one of the toughest games they've played. They were hit, they they hadn't been hit that hard. The kids were a little bit uh, surprised by it. But I I feel that if, uh, if there is no replay clock or replay and those two uh, uh, two uh, calls do not get called in their favor, it's a completely different game. Might still lose. Right. That game's a lot tighter than what it would have been. Yeah, when we had, you know, I, I – We well, had plenty we, of opportunities. I get that. Yeah, we had three. You know, you go back and you watch that film and you're sick, man. We were – there was three or four plays, three I know for sure, where we were like – Man, we were like a half step, like a quarter block away from it just being, you know, one Parker had a kid just totally beat on a double move going up the sideline. And Jeff just needed just needed that split second longer to be able to get. I mean, and that's there's no doubt that six. I mean, he had the kid fried on the double move. And then we had one on a kickoff return where we just we had it set up perfectly. And uh, our, our ball carrier just misread the wall, man, if he bounces it or gets to the wall instead of cutting it up tighter, it's, it's another one where it's, it's over. It's, it's six. So our kids fought, man, we were, you know, what, halfway through the third quarter, we were, we were tooth and nail with them. Uh, they just, uh, we, we just couldn't cash in on the opportunities we had. Uh, obviously when you have the replay, right, it's 50, 50. I know. I mean, you either get the calls or you don't. Um, I know this year, I don't think they have a kid going to Notre Dame. So that'll help. I mean, that, <laughs> that kid's gonna play as a freshman. That kid is. I remember standing in the in the tunnel next to that kid, and they had him listed at six three two oh five. And I look at Tony, and I said, "There's no way he's two oh five. I mean, that that's obviously what a Division one Power five uh, athlete looks like. I mean, I got a huge head, and that kid's neck was as big <laughs> as my head. Man, it was it was wild how thick he was. The question is, was your, that kid's head bigger than Tim McConnell's? Oh, I, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I do. Really? Holy shit. That's that, a big head. Shit, that's when we're talking about. We're getting in Todd, we're getting in Todd Davis his category. His neck and his shoulders, I mean, it was just like, there's no, I mean, there's, it's it's obvious why this kid's a power five division one football player. I mean, he was, and he was good. I, I pick no bones about, I don't make any, there's no argument, right? That kid was a was a phenomenal player. We played, you know, we, and we played playing division one kids off those country day teams and, and other teams, but you'd have to ask Tony, Ron and Bob this as well. But I think outside of Tyrone Wheatley, 
back in what 91 or whatever at Robichaud, whenever they played him in the playoffs, this kid might've been the next best, best one. Now I know you can make an argument with Jonas Gray there on the country Day team. Cause he had a stint with the Patriots, but, and Benny Fowler had a never ending career in the NFL there, but this kid, as far as being put together, wow. He, he it's, it's, it's an impressive body, impressive body. Coach, so. after a loss like that in Ford Field, do you just wash yourself and absolve yourself from it? Or do you sit there at night when everybody goes to bed and you're watching the game film over and over? <laughs> oh, man, right there could have been the moment or this could have been the play. No, I got, you know, I obviously you're disappointed, right? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm pretty darn competitive, but um you, you know, you have to, you have to appreciate the season. You really do. Yeah. I mean, as, as downer as it is, if you don't appreciate the season you had uh, and, and you don't make sure those kids realize that, uh, how much they are appreciated for what they did and, and, and you don't take that moment to enjoy that, then man, you're, you're chasing fool's gold. I mean, what frustrates me the most being in education uh, more so probably now than ever, I think it's because what well, you get less patient as you get older, right? My, my wife made me a t-shirt said that I, I tested negative for patients or whatever it says. <laughs> I just, I, I just don't have them anymore. And I, I just get so tired of 14, 15, 16, 17, and maybe it's 18 year olds, whatever's in that high school, those ages get uh, kids constantly getting thrown under the bus. Right. And, and constantly stereotyped and constantly, they don't do this. They don't do that. They blah, 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 blah. But yet last year it was amazing how many people in the school or how many people in the community, how many people in the area are one saying stuff like that about the kids. But yet this group of young men captivated the entire school, the entire community and the entire area. So, so we, we want to stereotype them one way, but then when things are going well, we want to jump on their bandwagon. That, that just drives me absolutely crazy, man. Like, I don't think kids are really that much different. I think kids, I know kids want to be coached hard. hard. Our kids are coached. You come to our practices and you're like, oh my God, they want to be coached hard, but they also now just want to know that you care, number two. And number three, you just coach them hard, but you got to coach them hard differently because society is different. I don't think the kid's different. I think society has made the kid appear different. So you just have to just do it a little bit differently, even though it's the same thing. Well, Darren, for in, in your in your case, um, you're allowed to coach kids hard because the community is bought into your program. But if you get into some get into some schools who try to to emulate you and do coach hard, and and they're you know there's a difference between pussy willows and thorn and thorn trees, and I, I, I think don't, I don't. Yeah. And, and Fred, you know, what you would get... you be a pussy willow? Or a <laughs> I, I, I know. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't disagree with that at all. And, and I firmly believe, man, the other key cog to this that enough people probably don't realize and coaches who have it bad realize and coaches who have a good realize I'm telling you right now, Sherry Becker is one. It has to be, like, I don't, we've had good principals. Like, Bill Yaley was a good, but I was never a head coach, right, for those guys. So, I don't, mm-hmm. you could have to ask Tony, but you know what I mean? Those guys that were sure. head coaches were other principals. But I'm telling you right now, Sherry Becker came to me and said, you know what? I think I'm going to another school or I'm retiring or whatever. I would sit there and I'd be like, like, I think I'm going to re, I'm going to, I'm going to think about whether I'm going to continue to coach or not. Like, hey, hey, is, hey, let's not get crazy, coach. <laughs> She is, she, you ain't going to, you are not going to find a more supportive or better principal uh, to be a head football coach for in a school. There's, there's no, there's other, I'm sure there's other good ones and there's probably others right with her, but you aren't going to find one better. And I'll say the same about our superintendent. I mean, Suzanne, I, what she did for me during COVID in helping me get through that or helping our program get through that. And the support she's had uh, since day one of getting the job. And, you know, Dave was fantastic and Chris is going to be fantastic. Man, your administration is important to this whole, this whole well, thing. Well, fortunately for you, Sherry Becker came from Fred Shaw's basketball program. Yeah. And I'm yeah. telling you right now, if you want to see somebody who is competitive, you think she's competitive. He, oh, I've seen this. <laughs> she told me, man, she goes, you don't have a running clock by halftime. 
you may get fired some days. Like she, you know what I mean? Like she wants to go call plays. If it ain't, if it ain't 35 something by halftime, she wants in. Like right. She speaks a little well, about it. You know, you're at, you're teaching at a football school though, right coach? I mean, everybody's a little bought into the football program at Marine City. Yeah, right? they, they, do. they get it. They no, they get it. They know, but you know, there's some, you know, I know you talk to some people, like you get administrators that just want to, right. They want to infiltrate it. You know what I'm saying? And they want to have their hands on it. Where these guys, these ladies, right, Sherry and Suzanne, ladies are so good, and Chris is going to be so good, where, like, they don't need to do that. They just want to be there to support you and help you and, and and do what they can to help this thing keep going. They don't they don't want to, and they, know, and they know they don't have to. They don't want to micromanage you. You know what I'm saying? They don't hold you back. They don't. Yeah. You're not going to fix something that's not broken. That's basically. No, they're there to help you. Yeah. So they're not well, Jerry you, Jones, in other pretty, words. No, they're not Jerry. Jones. Or Dave Brandon or any of those guys. Oh my <laughs> lord. You're, you're Matt Patricia and there, Dan coach. Quinn. You know, you're pretty important there. It's not like you're the tennis women's tennis coach I mean, so you know, like <laughs> you got the special Which is nothing spot. wrong with a you know, nothing your wrong with it at all. The teachers lounge, you know, they bring you coffee. <laughs> your liking every time, you know, it's like <laughs> I, I don't know if it's quite that good. I mean, there's there's different, uh, different points of view about you, but you know, I get it. I mean, I do, I get it. I, I really do. You know, let's be honest. I mean, Fred knows and he probably, she may share with you guys and I get it, man. Like I understand, you know, like heck when I was 25, I wouldn't have hired me either. You know, I don't know that I hired me when I was 35. You, you well, know I mean? I'm just going to tell you, Darren, uh, I was a little, I'm like, Oh God, he's coaching football. I'm like, now we're talking about bringing this kid up as a sophomore and I, I met with him, uh, uh, he and I, and I said, look, I'm going to bring you up and you're going to play. He's like, all right, cool. I said, well, here's the thing though. If I see you gyrate your head or you, you mouth off on the mound, I'm going to pull you out of the game. Yeah, and do as also, I say, not as I do. Yeah, in other words. Yeah, as you say, you yeah. said that, Fred? You, you said, said that. that. <laughs> you, you said that, Fred? No, you said yes, that. I did. And oh, okay. first, first game he pitched, ground ball to the shortstop, third inning. Guy bobbles it, and he starts getting all worked up, and I walk right out, point to the guy, and pulled him out of the game. I said, I wasn't kidding about it, but you know what? I only did it for one reason. So he understood where, where I wanted him to be because we were only going to be that much better if he was dialed in. And when he was dialed in, you know, he, he, he was, I mean, he was a competitor and that's the type of kid I wanted. You know, and one thing, you know, Darren, I felt, I felt bad for Darren. He pitched a hell of a game against Richmond, got the fly ball that we needed and probably one of the best athletes to come out of Marine city. Couldn't catch a fly ball. And it cost us, you know, and the thing is, is I felt bad for him because I knew, but the thing is, is I saw that he learned because he did not lose it. He walked over to me and he, and he got right in my face and he said what he had to say. He didn't do it in front of everybody. I'm like, All right, you know, and I agreed with him, but the thing is, is, you know, it was, it was just a matter of, you know, something that simple that can, you know, break your heart and you can lose it. He, he started very immature and, and worked his way up. And then he started getting involved with Bob and started getting, doing all this stuff. He went on and played college ball, went on, to, you know, came back and started coaching and volunteering and got with the right group of people. And, and this is what uh, Darren has amounted to. Coach, you know, no, so I, have you I, ever I heard of the that, term but... glory days? What's that? Have you ever heard of the term glory days? Oh, that was a great song, man. Hey, hey we're trying to think of, we're trying <laughs> yes, to think it of. Yes, it is. Listen, oh, shut up. We're trying, and I told Fred he's got to put the guitar on the sideline because, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, like, I'm, I'm sort of into the modern times a little bit, even though for as old as I am, I try and bring a little bit of excitement, you know. And, uh, boy, I really irritate those St. Clair people at the fireworks last year after game one, but that was cool. That was uh, beautiful. <laughs> but anyways, so what did you like do? My next, what did you do? What's that? What did you we do? Have fire, we, we have, fire, like, live fireworks show after every home win. Yeah. Now, like, we started that last year. Well, so I, it goes back to after we lost to Frankenmuth, you know, Suzanne, they all sent me great texts or whatever. I said, I am good. I appreciate everything. I just need time after this to decompress after what we just yeah, went yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. I said, the ship will sail. The cannon will fire. Um, the fire will go off. The smoke will fly. Cheers will cheers. Band will play. 
the stands will be full next year. And I said, fireworks will go off after every home victory. <laughs> and I just slipped that in there and I'm thinking, there's no way they're going to catch that and approve that. Suzanne, our superintendent said, that will be awesome. Just don't light the turf on fire. I'm like game on, you know what I mean? So after every home win, we literally have a fireworks show. Well, I didn't realize, I didn't even put two and two together. So our first game last year, because they weren't in our same division, was against St. Clair. We we beat them, and the fireworks are going off in the corner of the end zone there. And you know what? I didn't even think that, like, they thought it was in spite of them. You know, because that was our first game. Oh. So that was the first time we did it. So. <laughs> oh. They didn't realize I was going to do it every, <laughs> and it really, it's, it's going to happen this year too. It's going to go on forever. Every home win. So that oh, adds some fuel to the fire, which is awesome. Saint My Clair. whole thing is just beat us and then I won't light them off. I don't really It's care. the only time St. Clair is going to have fireworks after one of their games in, in, <laughs> in the stadium. I mean, that's once a year when it's against you. <laughs> you know, but, you know, going back to when I got the job, man, you know, I remember when Ron got it, Tony got it, and I, I was so young with Bob. I don't know. You know what I mean? But. You know, there, there, you know, there was always a little bit with those two. And I'm sure there was more with me because everybody knew or everybody thought and were, and that's fine. I don't, it didn't, it never really bothered me that, you know, like I said, I entrenched myself in their life and, and people saw me just sort of following them around like a puppy dog. And I'm sure, you know, you had people who I had and or whatever, saw me at 25, 35, and even 40. I don't know. I said, I don't know that I, I know I wouldn't have hired me at 25, I know I probably wouldn't have hired me at 35, maybe 40, but it's like I told, I told everyone, man, if this thing screws up, I had 20 years, you know, you know what I mean? Like just, and I guess so far things have worked out. So I think things will be good, but uh, you, you're always going to have those doubters. Um, oh yeah. I'm Whether sure you're a good team issue, or it, a it bad doesn't really, team. It doesn't really bother me. You know what I mean? Like it just really doesn't, doesn't but I tell you what you find out though you find out like really you know like how tight your inner circle is right you know what I mean like who the truly good people are and and and, and who get it you know let's be honest so like I've said with that and another thing I've told everybody is okay so I've been in education and coaching 25 years I got I'll pick no bones about it I'm not perfect who in their, I said, but who in their 25 year career, anything they're doing, I don't care if you're doing broadcasting. I don't care if you're a scientist, a biologist, a doctor, right. Who in a span of a 25 year career can sit there and say that, man, they have done everything by the book in perfect. You know what I mean? It hasn't screwed up. Like it's, it's, it's part of it. You know what I mean? I just think people like social media again, I just think things are judged so much judged and perceived so much differently now that you just you got to have big shoulders really in any profession you're in where you're out there you know what I mean where you're out in front of people you know anyone can sit and sign a little cubicle and do whatever but anytime you're out in front of people I just think now more than ever you just got to have bigger shoulders and roll with it man there's good and bad well I mean if you're not learning if you're not making mistakes I, I that's right. my opinion so no if you're not making mistakes you're not really trying you're not pushing the envelope. So everybody. No, I push that home all the time. I mean, my wife, you know, I mean, <laughs> she can give you a list. Her. Of She's got I wings. you wrong every hour and a half. You know? up in the closet like, for sure. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, I feel like I'm that dog or that puppy in the doghouse at home. Like, you know, like you just start seeing daylight, like you can come out and visit and hang out. And, man, you just get pushed right <laughs> Right to the back again, and you're back in the dark. You know what I mean? You, you keep your referring yourself bit. as puppy. Is that your wife's pet name for you or something? <laughs> no, yeah, but that's the way I feel. You know, that's the way I feel. I came up. You know, I just, I just want to look. The whole thing is, I just want to learn. You know what I mean? Like, I like from those guys. Think about it. You just want to be a sponge, right? Yeah. You just want yeah. to, yeah. just want to spend time learning. That's all I tried to do with those guys. You know what I mean? Your I'm wife does to, realize that you're the head coach at Marine City, right? I mean. Yeah. Cut you, no, you know what's a good joke? Crazy. That's a good joke. It's it's real funny here. So I I <laughs> I try to consider myself like I don't and maybe I am, I don't know, but I, I try to consider myself not a not an arrogant guy. I think I'm confident. I don't why would you do something if you're not confident? You know what I mean? Like yeah, I'm, go. Not, I'm not gonna do any job that I'm not confident in. So yeah. <laughs> we'll be driving through Marine City and she'll be like, Hey, you know you're speeding. I'm like, hey. <laughs> she goes, shut up you're not that important 
<laughs> so so this 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 summer we're in, we're in Ohio going down to Cincinnati to one of my son's baseball tournaments. And I'm going, man, I'm on 75. I'm like, I want to get there, blah, blah, blah. She goes, you aren't that damn important in Ohio. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> hey, coach, I'm going to yeah. make a prediction. You won't want to go speeding through Armada in a couple of weeks either. No, No, but you know what? I think it's cool, man. Like, I, I think it's a great week of football, really. I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but Richmond's playing St. Clair. Oh, yeah. Mary's with Belmont, and we're playing Armada. I think that's a cool week of high school football, you know? like It's like the ACC the versus the Big Ten, be. you know? Yeah, it's the way basketball. football should be, you know? Let's do it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Heck, in two years, let's flip the schedules. Take Damn Let's it. just take those six, and let's play Richmond. Mary's will play Armada, St. Clair play Belmont, and let's switch again in two years or whatever. Why not do it that way? Yeah. Coach, you got us all fired up, man. We're ready to you know suit what? up for you. Mike, Jesus. Mike, I don't like this guy. He's funnier than me. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like that. That's a low oh, trust bar, me. Though, He's Robert. a trust me. Uh, if you look up character in the dictionary, Darren's face is right there. So no, trust me. You know what we like to do? Well, I like to do, and they'll tell you, coaches. I like to give monikers to things. Like I have always called you the Alabama Green City. Marine City football is the Alabama of Thumb Coast football in Michigan. That's in my opinion, right? We talked about that a little bit. I can't call you the Nick Saban because no. Nick Saban in an interview would say three words. He you would. are definitely not Nick Saban. No, I probably got a little more Dabble Sweeney to me in interviews. Yeah, um, you're more Dabble Sweeney. Maybe uh, uh, who's, uh, who's the Texas A&M coach? Jimbo Fisher. That's Jimbo, what you're yeah, Jimbo something. Oh. Jimbo something, you know, a lot of people don't think I can read, you know what I mean? But like, I enjoy, like, like I enjoy reading, like Darren like, can read. Know? Yeah, I can. I think I read pretty good too, you know, but, um, a lot of action. Like, I, really enjoy, I enjoy reading books like about, I, I, my, I think Michael Jordan has some of the greatest books out. Like if you want to read about a competitor and, and what it's like to compete and to, and to train your mind to compete, you know, I just, I like, I, I'm weird like that. Like, I really like those, like, that's what I like to read and look at. You know, I Lloyd Carr has a, has a good book. There's a great book out in Michigan. Uh, that's if these walls could talk by John Falk, who was the uh, equipment manager for what fielding Yost, Bo, all those guys all the way down, you know, so you, you get all those stories about the Michigan program. And I, I just try and incorporate as much of that as possible. You know, like I, like I said earlier, I don't, you know, we, for so, so long, we said, ah, oh, we're not that good. You know, you can't, I've sort of switched that mantra, man. Hey, we're pretty good. Let's go play. You know what I mean? Let's, let's see who's where. Wait a minute. Wait game. a minute. You did say pretty good. What did you say before? I think we're real good if you want the truth, but. Uh, you said badasses. And yeah, I love no, that. Play you play said badass. And I'm holding you to yeah, badass. No, we do. You guys are bad. Yeah, we do. We want to. No, we do, you know, and I think every team wants to, right? Let's be honest. You don't want to yeah. – every team wants to play like a bunch of badasses, but uh, yeah. I, trust me, I get it, and our kids – their our kids know. Because uh, I don't, there's a fine line between having that swagger, you know what I mean, and wearing that jersey proud and that helmet proud and, and just being yeah. a proud player with swagger and crossing that line. You know, our, our, our kids have felt what those Mondays are like when they, when they, when they oh, do yeah. cross the line. Well, hey, but... Darren, I'm just going to tell you between you, Bob and Tony, you guys always said it the best. What's on your chest, the name on your chest is a lot more important than the one that's on your back. You yeah, guys use that much all the time. It. Think about it. Think about any profession, right? Yeah. All right. So let's use, um, <clears throat> let, let's use Michigan this year. Would Donovan Edwards, who's going to have a great season, right? Would mm -hmm. Donovan Edwards be getting the notoriety he's getting if he's at Central Michigan? Oh, no. Probably no. not, right? I mean, that name, Michigan, some of those Michigan kids, Michigan. Alabama kids, Clemson kids, Ohio State kids, USC yeah, so. kids, oh, it puts them at the forefront a little bit, which it should. They've earned the right to be there. Yeah. So they, if they play through this, that on the back will get taken care of. Play through the front, and the back will get handled. Right. Nice. Looking forward to seeing Lou Nichols in, in, uh, up at Central and see what he does this year. Who's that? Lou Nichols, <laughs> the running back from Central Michigan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's going to be all right. He's going to be a stud. 
Hey, and Donovan Joe. Edwards, hey, Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum, I think are going to have great years in that. And I think a lot of people are not uh, giving the offensive line a lot of credit for Michigan, even though they're, you know, they, they lost a couple people. They're still going to be studly. And that, they're, and that they're saying they're going to be better this year. And their wide year. receiving core. Uh, now that Ronnie Bell came back, I'm like, Jesus, I'm like, I'm like, just, I'm excited. The, the nice thing is, is high school football comes first. And to me, High school football is the best out of, out of all three because it's more pure and more innocent compared it's, it's to the, the rawest, college. It's the rawest, most pure sport you, you can watch. I mean, this is yes. what a nerd I am and what a junkie <laughs> I am. Like, every year, and my wife will vouch for this, I watch Boys of Fall, man, like 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 right before our first game. Like that to me, that that movie, Boys of Fall with Kenny Ches, that is the most yep. uh, uh, pure movie right of what a pure sport is i mean that is about as raw as it i mean let's me you don't you friday night lights is i mean that's as pure as it's going to get for some of those kids it ain't going to get no better you know what I mean? right so hey coach did you uh did you get a fo- new football coach from elgin at this year we did so um yeah we got a couple actually so a couple things we filled on our staff is uh you know obviously you know people ask about my shelf life and then you have others, right? I mean, Andy Shields, a few year, years older than me, he's he's got to be close to 50. I think he's he's been barking on that 50, and he's getting close to, you know, being able to to retire from education. Um, and then, uh, you know, Coach Nesbitt's already, you know, retired and comes back and helps this and that, or, or coaches our offensive line, but he's essentially retired on to his second career. Uh, and then you have others. Coach Forgetto has been there 20 years with our, with our JV program or whatnot. So after last year, I'm like, man, we got to start getting younger. You know, like if this thing's going to continue after, after me, which I hope it continues through me, but after we, we got to have it ready to go. Like it can't be, it's got to be ready to go. It's, it's got to continue to go. Um, so we brought coach, Lo- coach Loper over uh, from Algonac. Uh, he's doing a great job with our JV kids doing our JV defense. Um, um, uh, Jacob Headley who graduated shoot, what did he graduate in 15 or 16, somewhere around there and had a four year career at Elma. Yeah. We just hired him or I didn't hire him, but our administrators hired him in the, in the building. So he's going to teach in our building and coach our JV, uh, our coach in our JV as well. And then uh, Anthony Murphy, who is part on our, part of our uh, 13 state championship team. He's going to be a permanent sub. He's coaching with us. And then we're fortunate enough to have Mm -hmm. Tyler Wozniak and Ty Nelson, who were big contributors to our team last year, uh, they're going to the the local SC4, um, and they're interested in going into coaching and education. So uh, we're having them come back and help as well. Just to, you know, let's be honest, man, like you get older, you know, sometimes just bringing that energy, you know what I'm saying? It's nice. It's refreshing to have those younger guys around because that just re-energizes you. Well, you're um, now tasked well. to do what Coach Bob did at one point yeah. too, right? Because yeah. you got to yeah. identify and and, and get those yeah. guys brought up into the program. Yeah. So it's, it's been great. I mean, <laughs> coach friends back with our defense, coach Alito's back, uh, coach scars, more hands on now. He's um, obviously he retired from education, but he's getting to, you know, where he's defense giving line. up some of his uh, uh, top cat stuff. And he's, he's basically there. He's there full time now. Um, and then coach shield and we're, our varsity staff. I, you know, the only thing I say all the time, let's be honest, you look at our staff. I mean, I'm not, I'm not foolish enough to think I'm the only guy on that staff that can coach. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of good guys. There's a lot of head coaches that, 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 that's just a position coach. I mean, and the thing is, is there is no, I don't care. I'll argue this uh, until the, until uh, the next day, I'll tell you that there is no coaching staff in this state that, can be at the same level as you guys are you're at least top three top four in the state where you have from every position every position coach to all the way up to you um that you just can you know that any one of those guys could step in and and keep this you know keep this going without any hesitancy it's it's wild man like coach scars in the hall of fame right uh coach nesbitt good is going to be and should be if he's not here next couple years i'll be absolutely amazed because i've nominated him um coach front will be in due time um coach shield should be in due time i mean if coach alito who 
I mean, this guy's like, like I'm going to call him a rising star in coaching. And the only reason I'm calling him a rising star in coaching is because like he's doing it very well, but it's hard for a lot of those guys um, that played at a level he played at. I don't want to say they're talking down, but like, like they have to come down to a high school kids level. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, here you're blocking Aaron, Aaron Donald, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, but then now you're going to coach some five, seven, 175 pounds. <laughs> so, I mean, he's, he's just each year, the adjustment he makes in, in his growth with just being able to do that through experience. It just takes time to be, a, it's not sure. his knowledge. It just takes how to relate, you know, he just does such a great job. At, I mean, He's awesome. I mean, him and Bill, what they do with our offensive line is unbelievable. And like I said, with Fred on the defense, and I don't even know what he talks about. I mean, he talks about he's got things called Tombstone and Ty Cobb, and he's signaling in this guy hitting a home run for Ty Cobb. And I don't. I mean, the other day he's talking about Isosceles Triangle. I don't even know what the hell an Isosceles Triangle. Is. <laughs> I mean, last year Welper's out there, Brandon Welper from the Times Herald talked to me about Dave, and I'm like. I, he's like, well, what is he? I'm like, I don't have any idea what he does. Like, I don't even, I don't, I can't, I don't understand what word, like, I can't even spell. So I told him, like, I can't even spell some of the words he uses. Like, go talk to him because I don't have any idea what tombs. I don't know what tombstone is. <laughs> My bottom line is just give me the damn ball so I can try and put points on the board. I don't, yeah. I, I don't talk about like Omaha, being, Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. Yeah. yeah Omaha. Front being like a uh, uh, goodwill hunting. <clears throat> like, dude, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, it, it, I mean, last year it's classic though, classic day friend. I love the guy to death, man. He is awesome, and he does a great job with the guitar. So, yeah. oh, back to that. I got two, two, another story for you about that. So, anyways, <laughs> last year in Portland, like we're fine. Like it's 26, 27, seven, whatever it is. It's like ten minutes. Left. I swear to God, it felt like three hours. Those last ten minutes. But I turn around the kids with like five minutes to go, and you could just see the eyes. Like they, they're realizing now that this is. This is coming to fruition. <laughs> About three minutes left. There's a kid from Portland, from whatever reason, talking talking crap. Yeah. And Brent pulls out the the air crossover, pull up Jay, and he's telling the kid to get his jump shot ready because that's what they're going to be doing next week in the midst oh, of getting yeah. a defensive line. <laughs> the official on our <laughs> sideline looks at me. He's got his whistle in the mouth. He gives me a little grin. He goes, that was a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like, but the other thing is hey so i was talking earlier and i get i get sidetracked all the time man i lose my train no, you're kidding. we we all do no, squirrel just, yeah oh it's like to ask the kids they're like what the hell's wrong with this guy but it's amazing we don't get more delay games but anyways <laughs> so like i'm trying well, to know who you are excitement so flag, and stuff to the stadium right on game nights so um florida Give me a second. Florida at the end of every uh, third quarter, right? If you notice in college football, every um, stadium has like a a, uh, a thing they do at the end of the third quarter, like a yeah. song. Yeah. 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 Uh, Mr. Brightside from Michigan. Yeah. They do. yeah. Jump. Yeah. And so here's ours. Tom Patty, I won't back down. Oh, that's Florida. nice. That's what the Florida. They do it at the swamp. They do, they it, at do the it at swamp the swamp in Florida. Yeah. So nice. Brett's a guitar player. I told him he's got to bring his Tom Petty wig and whip out the guitar at the end of the third quarter and just start ripping that thing at on the sideline, man. I said you want to get some people going nuts. Yeah, that's the way to do this. But we're trying to get the band to start it, start singing it, and then we got that video board. Yeah, we're gonna put it all up on the video board, and hopefully that place just starts humming in between quarters. Tom Love Petty it. was originally from Gainesville. That's why they do Who is? it. Tom, Tom Petty. Petty. I yeah. didn't know that. from Gainesville. Yeah, yeah. that's I why they do it. They've always done that at the Florida games. Yeah, the Wait. year that he passed away, they went dead silent, didn't play the music, and the people in the crowd sang that, uh, that song. I yeah. didn't know that. Okay. All through. I mean, it was, dude, it, it, it put chills up your, uh, up your back, yeah. how awesome it was. Yeah. yeah. But I thought, hey, I thought that was a fitting song for us. Hey, Coach, Absolutely. Who do you think, what, what football team in the thumb area has the best, oh, let's say, press box announcer? <laughs> oh, man. <let's, laughs> no, we got Freddie. You know what I have with Freddie? Here's a, here's a funny thing with Freddie. So Freddie's like, Freddie's famous line is another Mariner first down, right? <laughs> so like, I'm in the middle of coaching a game, and I don't remember who it was. This is, Freddie, Dale you talked about this? We know Dale this. Dale Kaufman. 
We yeah, know. like wants to talk to me about whether or not that. What do you want to throw a flag for? Like that's unsportsmanlike conduct or something. Yeah. I'm like, how do you throw a flag on an announcer? Like, I don't even know. I, I asked him, I said, how would you signal that in? Like, how do you, what's the signal for, do you point at the announcer? Yeah, like, you well, point I, 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 up. I'd never heard of that. Yeah. Well, here's the, here's the best part. A little, uh, a little, uh, you know, uh, kind of karma. Uh, Zimmerman, uh, Craig couldn't do the game, uh, JV game. And Jesse Laboon calls me as I'm driving home from work. He goes, Hey, what are you doing right now? I said, nothing he goes hey can you come down and do the jv game i'm like sure i'll come down and do it. he goes really all right cool and i come down and who's working the game it was dale dale coffin first time marine city gets the first down. i go in and now that's another mariner first down and and friggin everybody in the everybody in the booth slapping me five I go, well, you, you didn't back down i'm like oh god jesse friggin was going at he goes, oh, that's so cool that you did. He's punching me in the arm. I'm like, I'm not backing out. Of that. It's unsportsmanlike conduct. A hey, typical, typical guy from the uh, from the city just to the north of Marine City. That hey, did you crazy. notice, Rob, that uh, coach didn't answer that question? Who's the best announcer? That'd be funny, man. It really does. Like, you know, here's here's the thing though. Talking about announcers, just talking about area football. How bizarre is it? And I don't know if it's true, but I heard. Man, when in the early '90s they were they were amazing, but Emily City's not having a team this year, a JV only, and so is Elginac. Really? No varsity football? I, they don't have enough kids. Like they're having JV only. I can't even uh, like I can't even imagine that. I can't even fathom that. Well, school of choice. Bring those kids up 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 uh, up north one one it, town. Isn't that amazing though? Like, how do you go to high school and you don't have like? Just think if you're a senior, right? There's probably a couple seniors at each, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, amazing at Algonac because they're pretty they're pretty big football town too in Algonac. I can't believe I, that. Blown away. Wow. After a couple of years, the uh, the coach that was there that had a couple of successful years is that the guy that's at, with you guys now? No, no, that uh, Coach Barnhart. So he came down. Was it Fowlerville or something like that? He came came down or over from from there, and uh, he's retired. He actually, he I think he saw the writing on the wall a little bit. He retired right after the 18 season, after we beat him. And he's like involved in the NEA. Uh, he's an investor for the NEA, which is a, a yeah. education association or whatever. Right. He does he's the really same thing as Linguski, right? What's doing that? Stuff with, he's doing stuff with Eric Linguski? I think so. I think they've, yeah, I don't know if they work directly together, but I think they're they're, they're in the same group. Yeah, because we all love Eric uh, Eric Linguski. You know, he's a great guy, <laughs> man. You know what I mean? He's love also that guy. Yeah, I wish I could lose that weight. I mean, he looks good. Yeah, Eric. Eric's... Eric's solid of the earth, man. Hey, coach, we talked about this with the other past coaches that came on the show, but, and this is a big sticking point for us of the three of us. How does Marine City not get the call to play in the big house in the rematch against, or even Wayne State? So, uh, in the big house, I mean, I mean, that was a great game. And I I mean, are we getting slighted for some reason? How do we not? No, so you got to, um, so the I believe the Wayne State and Tony could verify this. I thought the Wayne State one was, and there's a couple of reasons why I haven't pursued it, and I'll explain them in a second. The Wayne State one I thought was you had to be playing in Adidas school too, because so I thought Adidas put on the Wayne State one. So I think it was Adidas school versus an Adidas school. That could be wrong, but I thought that was it for that. The Big <clears throat> House one is a fortune. Like you have to sell tickets to pay your bill to, to, to play there. It's not like, it's not like, it's like, so for example, I took the baseball team down and we played at Comerica Park this year, right? Uh, Scott Evans and I both had to pay $4,500. It was 9,000 for us to play there. You know, we each paid 4,500. So, and, and I know the football is more with, with the big, Oh, I'm sure. Know. So it's, it's the raising and the funding and the money with that. The other reason I haven't pursued it a whole lot is if it's a home game, not just myself, but our whole athletic program loses that concession stand money, you know, and that concession stand money is, is, is somewhat important to us to, through our booster club because our booster yeah, club runs it. our concession stand and they've, they do such a nice job supporting all our athletic programs. I don't want to take that money away 
away from right. them. From their so I, yeah. I have a follow up question for that, Darren. Yep. Not, I mean, you you play in the MAC. Yep. You go down to the the team that you're playing, and and they're making they're making bank because of, of how we travel. But then mm -hmm. we come, then they come up to our place, and they got. Yeah. Three, three parents, a parole <laughs> officer, a parole officer, and maybe the and, or whatever. I'm sorry. I, I'm, it just ir shoot. irritates me. You so the, it out. yeah. So the question I have for you, the <sighs> thought of recreating a league of the teams that maybe you know from Anchor Bay, you know Luther North or whatever, and 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 up north where you might have the scale again, and where you know, you know, where you can have easy travel, you know, and uh, where you can have the Richmonds, you can have the poor year and highs, the poor year yeah. northerns, even though you got A's and, and B's in the league, you know, you can create a, a North and a South league. And then at the end of the year, whoever's lead, whoever's winning the division. So what I, yeah. So what I, I, I know has been talked about and it seems to be talked about more. Um, and I know we talked about it. I, I was part of the conversations this spring is, I want to get the teams right. There's, there was, um, there's eight BWAC teams. Am I correct? Cause they play seven conference games. They have a one and nine that yeah. they try and find. So there must yeah. be eight current teams. Okay. So the BWAC is trying to find four to six teams. They'd like a 12 team conference or a 14 team conference. What they would like to do is form a North of 69 league and a South of 69 league. So I know we were part of the conversation. Uh, Luther North was part of the conversation. And then St. Clair is part of the conversation. St. Clair is somewhat the sticking point because of their other sports that they have that some BWAC schools don't have. My argument to that is those sports that the BWAC don't have are primarily individual sports you can still fill a schedule and play in an MHSA sanctioned schedule, you know, sure. to do the postseason stuff after. Uh, I know Millington was a North of 69 school and I don't remember the other one. Uh, so that, that I know they've looked at North the, branch. The hiccup. What's that? North, well, branch. North branch is in because we didn't go the last time. <laughs> That's the reason North branch is in, but the sticking point with what you talked about, is oh and if they did that north and south you would like leave game seven and eight or eight and nine whatever ends up being open so like the one and two of the south would cross over with the one and two of the north at the end of the season right so you'd have like a little like an like a big ten like a BWAC championship type game right, right. Like, are you following this mike are you got i'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm not I'm really lost. <laughs> <laughs> lost. the 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 sticking point to what you mentioned with the port huron schools and anchor bay is, is football because football is the only school you don't automatically qualify for the state playoffs. Um, so so like, let's say points. this, let's say, let's say, yeah. So let's say we crossed over with Anchor Bay, Port here and high and Port here in Northern shits and giggles, right? Let's say Marine City did that. Maybe we win one or two of them, but the problem is as we found out when we were in division four or back in the day when we were in the gold, so we said, and I said it again this year, I'll play in the gold. Don't make me cross over with the blue or white. The problem we were having with some of them short playoff runs is playing in the gold. When you have to cross over with them bigger schools in the blue and white, you might win the game, but you're losing the war through the course of the season because your body, your just your smaller kids' bodies are are they're, they're just breaking they're just breaking down. Sure. Um, so that's the that that's the sticking point with the with 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 what you talked about. Yeah, because uh, really the biggest thing I, I'm thinking is is you know I think we uh, we as a school and I, that's Marysville, that's St. Clair, that's Marine City, um, really get uh, get the shaft when they have a home game and the only money oh, that do. they're making oh, the do, only money that we're making yeah. is from our own fans. Yeah, yeah no, no, I I agree, and they, I mean that's why. I mean, that's that's what's huge about any of those home playoff games because you start to draw more, right? The farther you go in the playoff games, and the most you can host is three. Right. But you really, I mean, we we did really well those three playoff games last, and that's the key, you know, for the for the concessions. Those, but you do, I mean, those three extra games are are huge, and our booster club does a great job helping fund 
you know, all the athletic programs, whoever asks for, you know, a purchase sure. or, or whatever, they're, they're, they're very responsive. They, they do a great job and they have for, for years, obviously. Hey coach, so. Mike and I going through last year, we went to most of the home games and uh, all the playoff games that were at home and the cup, the one on the road. Um, we got very good in the stands by predicting once you guys got the ball, we would look at each other and say three plays, four plays, <laughs> two plays before you scored. And we were pretty, we're always within a play or two, weren't we, Mike? Yeah, we were. <laughs> we, I mean, we would say it's a fumble. We're going to pick it up. You know, run it. And it, God, we were like right on it every time, just about. Felt like it's, Tony Romo a little bit. To be honest, yeah, yeah, yeah without the yeah, without the real knowledge, we were just freaking guessing, coach. Right, I mean, that's what sure, we were sure. Doing. Sure. as the rest of the people up there do a lot, man. <laughs> oh, you got a bunch of armchair quarterbacks up there for sure. <laughs> My wife know. don't sit up. She, oh, she just like she goes, I can't. She goes, I'm a. She goes, do you hear any of that? I'm like, no. She goes you know, whatever the score is, she goes, but you're winning. I don't know. She goes, I, I really don't know what's going on, but I know you got more points than the other team. And you would think like, you're going <laughs> to like, said, you're getting, you're getting your ass kicked. That's what the I headsets said it is. are for, right? Yeah, That's like, what the coaches are. Well, it's been funny telling us. You know, just to mention, you know, you had mentioned back, uh, you know, earlier in the show about the uh, Flint powers game. Um, people were getting ready to leave that game. Oh, and, sure. And, and Tim McCollum was one of them. And I said, Hey, I'm telling you right now, if we score before halftime, we're going to get the ball and we're going to score and we're going to win this game. And as soon as they scored just before halftime, Tim looked at me and I said, now do you believe what I'm saying? And all of a sudden then Brendan took over that game. Defensive end, knocking the ball down. That was doing wild. Everything. He's single -handedly. The thing is, is, I said, you, when, when, that, when you guys scored there, I, I said, They're gonna, we're going to win this game. That, that, and that performance everybody was thought crazy. I was – yeah, I thought everybody thought I was you freaking said a that. ton. No, it's going to end up just like Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, blah, blah, blah. Fred, you said that? <laughs> hey, Mike, will you, Mike, would you like yeah. to share with Coach the story two years ago of us at the Marysville game in Marysville? Yeah. Hey, go, Mike. Let's Tell talk that about story. that. Oh, yeah. So, so, first of all, we show up late to the game because Rob and I are having a couple beers at the at the Moose and Fred's yeah. all upset with us. Well, he was on the other side no of the field anyway. So, we, we were on the Mariners side. How'd you guys get tickets? How'd you guys get tickets? Was that the COVID Fred, one? Fred. Fred no, that, that was Fred, the... Fred got his tickets. Yeah. yeah. That was No, the... we bought them online. We bought them online. Oh, that's right. We did, yeah. That was the, the drive game. Yeah, yeah. so... We yeah, get so that would have been 20, the COVID year. We're like, you had to scalp tickets to damn near get into a place. Okay. So Fred is beside himself. You know, you know how Fred gets. Uh, he's just, he's F bombing it. He's just no, like, it was the 21 season. Cause last year was, was it 22. 21. Yeah. Was it was the 21 season. 21? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it was, right. it was Heslop's freshman year. Yeah. Don't no, yeah. I'm sorry, Mike. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go Mike. This is the perfect story. Coach no, that's fine. Here. So yeah. Fred's beside himself. What was there, like 47 seconds to go when he's, you guys got the ball? 48 seconds, something like that? He yeah, is just what? going going off. He's, he's pacing, Coach. Uh, he's pay, pacing. Back and forth. He's I got can't that believe it. Just... Slamming his fists, all this shit. We're trying to talk him off the cliff saying, Fred, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. Come on. You know, they get a couple big plays. You know, they can score fast, blah, blah. He's, he's going bananas, throwing his, throwing his arms you know, you know, pounding his fist. I thought he was going to Because I didn't want to listen off. to my friggin' daughter uh, who goes to Marysville riding in, running it in my face. So anyway, you, know you guys you guys get that big play up the sideline. What do you get down to, like, the their 30 and the, on the first yeah. play? I, I just like, remember it was wild. Like, I, I remember Frank, yeah, I'm like, Frank, let, like Dave and I were talking, we're like, let them score. You know, like, they're not – I didn't – I just didn't think they were – I don't want to say it, but I didn't think they were smart enough not to score right away. So I'm like, let them score. I said, I need 55 seconds. I said, I got 40 yards in the first play with a slot fade here. I know they won't cover. So they let them score and God damn it. We get pinned with the kickoff. And, uh, you know, that first play we were on that slot fade, which I knew they wouldn't cover with where the safety was. Jeff, uh, sophomore completes it to Anthony Rafino, a sophomore. Rafino. It was but Rafino. The, yeah. Yeah. The key play to that whole drive you know, we're, we're up on the line of scrimmage, but really the key play, the whole drive that people forget is Marysville had a kid stay down on the field on that play. So that was like a time because we were out of timeouts. 
Oh yeah. That was, like a, okay. that was like a timeout to us. Yeah. So okay. I was able to put three plays in there while they're looking at that kid, you know, that were on our card. I just said, yeah, we're going to go play yeah, six, yeah. nine, play 11, whatever, you know, and they, they had their chance to look at them and, and go right there. And then the next play, uh, because on the prior play, Charles was manned up against the, uh, the Wooder kid, but the Wooder kid gave him like a 30 yard cushion. I'm like, just throw it out to him. He's going to get 20 yards before the Woodard kid even, even closes. And Chuck made a move and got 25 and got about, I mean, when two plays were down to the 20 there, you know, so it kids just executed really well, but people laugh. We run, I mean, we practice the two minute drill, one minute drill, 40 second drill. Like it is like no timeouts, two timeouts. It is part of our, our regular practice and we use it as a conditioner. I mean, that's how we condition now. We don't condition with sprints anymore. We yeah, it's condition. better to get the, the play. It's the football double activity, different. football drills, yeah. because they have to think whether – they got to think why they're tired on the field. Like, you just don't go run a 45-second drill or do 20 down-ups in the middle of a game. Yeah. So we incorporate everything into our drills, into our practice hey, through the normal giving forward, away right? these secrets. Stop giving away these secrets, <laughs> damn it. That, that's proprietary stuff. We don't want that out there. He's confident, man. He's like Nebraska. You know, back in the day, they tell you where they're running. You know, your famous wow. saying there, Brian. Yeah. Aaron. Yes, I am a guilty person of, on that on that day. But I'll tell oh, you now. So funny, coach. That not only not only was that a great drive, but the last play call where you delayed the back out of the backfield to go to the go to the pylon. I'm like, what a fucking great play. I'm like, wow. <laughs> And and to see a sophomore with very with limited uh, limited action as a freshman look like a season pro. He did that outstanding. I'm like yeah. shit. I mean, we got we got him for two more years. Can you imagine what you know what he's? This is be not like? a good representation, coach, of what it looked like. Uh, Freddie's <laughs> surmise here. <laughs> it's really not. Easy. No. I was at the point where I was ready to jump off the Blue Water Bridge, but the problem is, Darren, <laughs> yes, I, was, I would have survived the fall. <laughs> he was still <laughs> even pissed when it's we won. Right. He was even pissed when we won because he was so worked up about you yeah. know them scoring that touchdown. It took him like twenty minutes to settle down. <laughs> Oh, Freddie, Freddie, Freddie. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we but say. I, See what we do. He's your biggest fan, Coach. Well, he, and he knows that because living in Marysville and flying a Mariner flag is not the most popular thing. Yeah. I'll never forget the one day I was cutting the lawn and I had the flag flying, and Jim Vigna stops his car right in front of my uh, driveway. And I look up and he's looking at me. He's just shaking his head. He's like, he's like what the hell is that? I said, That's a real football team's flag. <laughs> he goes, Oh, yeah. He goes, What? He goes, What? He, he goes, what's going to happen when you start having kids? I said, school of choice. He goes, well, you motherfucker. And he started laughing because, you know, I, I've been known Jim forever because my dad uh, co coached with him and knew him real well and how's, stuff like that. How's Jim doing? Vina? Yeah. Um, you know, I haven't seen him, but uh, yeah. um, I haven't heard anything bad. But, uh, you know, good cat. Um, you know, even Walt was a good guy. You know, he – he used to praise my dad every time he'd see me, he'd talk about my dad and stuff like that too. And, yeah, uh, I mean, but you know, the thing is, is, you know, growing up in, growing up in Marine city and seeing how, how that, that program, not only in, not only in, in football, but in baseball, Darren, when, you know, since you, you took over, especially after my dad, you know, and you, and, you know, you really brought the program back uh, to where it's uh you know, it's relevant again and, and people get excited for even baseball season too. So, you know, kudos to you to be able to do two major sports in a school and, and, and basically you, you do a lot of stuff like Ron did, you know, whatever sport you went and coached, you know, success is always following along. So got to give you a lot of credit for that. No, I appreciate it. Make sure you tell dad in Florida, I said, hi. Oh, Hey, my dad, my dad loves everybody. He told me, I told him that uh, I talked to him last night. And he told me over uh, FaceTime, I said, Hey dad, uh, we got, uh, Darren Lutzen on the show. He goes, well, you tell, you know, he, he's really slow, but uh, he says, you tell lefty. I said, hello. And I love him. Yeah. And he's <laughs> a great guy, man. He's a great guy. I'm glad he's doing well. How old is dad now? 82. 82. I don't know if this body right here is going to make it to 82 to be honest with you. This body. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, the thing is, is, you know, if you remember my dad, he was a mountain of a man. I mean, he's, yeah. he's a lot, he's 
a lot frail. He's frailer, or I should say that. But you know, the thing is, is the one thing is he remembers a lot. So people say he can't remember anything. Some of the things that he remembers is hilarious. Good like I'll him. never forget. We went golfing over here in Marysville, and one of the kids he coached at St. Clair came up to him, gave him a hug, started talking to him. And he's like, okay, um, I'll see you guys later. You'll see you later. See you later. And as we're walking away, he's just mumbling. I'm like, what's wrong? He goes, that, that, that MF mother, mother, I'm like, what? He goes, that motherfucker fumbled on the goal line against Marysville and we lost. That son of a bitch. I mean, and everybody's talking about he can't remember anything. I'm like, yeah. I came back to everybody. I said, yeah, his memory's fine. <laughs> well, I, but I, uh, competitive guy, man. But, but, yeah. uh, but you yeah. know what? It's someone who loved his players, man. There's no question about that. Oh, I agree. I agree 100%, bro. No, I so appreciate you. Want to thank you though. What's we that? Want to thank you. We want to thank you for coming on the show. It's been uh, it's been no, a I treat. It. Will you I come agree. on again? Because I'll tell you what, you're the most uh, engaging football coach I think we've ever had on the. On the oh yeah, let, just give me give me a heads up. You want me? You you want me you want me come on before a game or whatever or a week before a game? You know what I mean? Whatever's on our schedule, just uh, just just give me a heads up. We'll find a way to make it work. I. How, I, how about I, after I, you win the state championship this year, you can come on. How yeah, just you know what that uh, I I would love to do that. I would love to, and that, that's been that's not there's no bones about it. that's the ultimate goal, man. I mean that's what we're our our model this year is the chase, and the chase is never ending, and it's always going to continue. So uh, that's that's just with the way the way we are. We're we're going to chase that, not this not just this year, but that's that's what the chase is about. So everybody yeah. already knows it, but re relay again, the date, the time against Armada, when, when's that happening at home and uh, predict. Yeah, it's a neat event. Um, last year we did it against St. Clair. I think it was very receptive. Uh, I know our community liked it. I think St. Clair community liked it. So our JV is going to play at four o'clock on Friday, August 26th. And then the varsities are going to play at seven on Friday, August 26th. So it's a little bit of a, uh, a double, right. Uh, similar to baseball. Yeah. Uh, and the reason we're doing that is uh, we're, we're doing it on Friday because we're the only show in town. Um, I don't think, as far as I know, anyways, I don't believe any other area teams playing on Friday. So uh, stadium should be full uh, on a Friday night. And uh, I think it should be a very good environment. And I think, I, you know, why not give high school kids a, a, the best environment you can provide for them to, to experience and, and, and play on. And hopefully the weather's beautiful. People from around the area come, uh, come play and, um, uh, you know, let the chase begin. Let's see what happens. Awesome. awesome. Thanks a lot, Coach, for being on. We appreciate it. No worries, guys. Have a great night. Thanks for having me, all right? You too. Absolutely. Thank you. Good man, Darren. You're a good man. Thanks, Freddie. Have a good one, guys. All right. We'll see you. Take care. Bye.